Is my PPT visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So two days are very important. Sir, uh, your voice is echoing. Yes. Your voice is echoing. Voice is echoing. I don't know why it is echoing. Yes. Yeah. Is it still? Now it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So the very important confidence. important concept of behavioral finance that is the overconfidence bias in trading and investment world and uh, as a finance students it is very important to know because uh, because of this overconfidence bias there is fund they have failed so the moment so the moment this bias that i am in a position to predict or forecast and it will i will just continue to forecast and predict at the same speed with the same accuracy so it leads towards the assessment of our ability in a much exaggerated way than what we have right so actually just i want to share you a story of a very famous hedge fund that had been set up in 1993 by the two novel finance and economics laureate black and scots so black and scots they both gave the breakthrough formula for the option pricing in the world of finance and uh, they set up this long term capital management fund in 1993 so it was going well they developed a kind of arbitrage fund and it initially their strategy was that it was just based on pure arbitrage so they were just in a position to reap the benefit of price differentiation that prevailed into the two market so it was working well but one thing is sure that the spread in arbitrage it is very low and the game of arbitrage is based on the concept of leveraging and the difference between the price that prevails into the two market so what happened that long term capital management the way they were minting money they were being over confident about their strategy and they started putting leveraged money being over leveraged and being over confident and what happened that in 1998 when the firm was giving its peak performance so they were assets under management almost 5 billion dollar and from this 5 billion dollar they tried to control the assets of kind of leveraging they were having so if you divide this 5 billion dollar if you divide this 20 by 
uh, so by if you divide 100 billion dollar by 5 they are leave their leverage ratio reached up to 20 times so what does it mean so actually the leverage ratio it is a very dangerous thing to work upon if it starts going against you so i have a just I want to know something from the students. Do you know what does mean by the leverage ratio and how does it work? It's a basic concept of finance. Any student? Do you have any idea that how does the leverage ratio work? Any student? Sir, it's an extra income that uh, a company can compensate their uh, expenses. Sir. How many what? times? Sir, how many? Piece? Sir, it's a ratio between the obligation of the company and the earning that they have. Yeah. So it means, look, they had Basically, yeah. So they have assets, the LTCM, they had asset under management, it's a five billion dollar. But with this five billion dollar, they started controlling the assets. Assets controlled is equal to 100 billion dollar. So, this 100 divided by 5, it means it's a 20. It means against every 1 rupee they were putting into the market, they had taken a loan of 20 rupees. So, look at the kind of leveraging they've had. Right? So, even a slide. So, if If I am not in a position to get the cost of my debt by putting it into the business, what will happen? The things will go haywire. That's why even in the fundamental method of investment, looking at the investment, what we try to look at? The most debt equity ratio is one of the important parameters that everybody has to do. Right? And leveraging ratio is a very dangerous thing to use. So what happened that gradually they were not increasing, it means against every one rupee of their own they take, they took a kind of loan of 20 rupees and they started putting it into the market. This was the biggest mistake that was committed by the long term capital management. And the strategy which they were working, it all of a sudden its spread got squeezed. So the cost of debt that we, they were having, it became, it ballooned like anything and just it collapsed. So likewise, there are many failure, there are many failure story, right? Like capital bearing and all. If you search in the Google that top uh, 10 hedge fund failure story, you will get a lot of information, right? So why all this failed? Is it the reason that all the, even just the Lehman brother collapse and all, why have they failed? It's the overconfidence. Overconfidence in the model, overconfidence in the system, and in the ability of the system and the model. So in the world of trading, this uh, Overconfidence is this people visible to all? Yes. Sir, the whiteboard sir. No PPT. No sir. No, not visible. Now is it visible now? Yes sir. So what? How will we define the overconfidence bias? 
that overconfidence bias uh, it's a situation where you start believing that now my ability has become much greater than what exactly we have so we start exaggerating our ability right so we have the ability look to suppose i have the maximum return that we have been giving we believe that it is very difficult to give a return more than 18 20% at a large capital right but the moment and we have been generating it for last uh, 12 13 years consistently right but the moment uh, we start believing that this 18 20% it's a very easy job to do that would be our over confidence and we start ignoring so many precautionary measures that need to be taken that may impact our 18 20% even greater so basically over confidence bias it defines a situation where what we choose to believe is greater than the truth so when you start to rely on your own estimate fear rather than the facts so we start ignoring the facts we start ignoring the data we exhibit the over confidence bias say for example i am telling you if suppose you appear in an examination suppose look suppose i hope there are uh, how many semesters are there in the mba examination four or eight it's four four semester so suppose you appeared in the first semester and you got some good marks some good cgpa right it is 8 plus or something in the next also you got the same as cgpa here there or somewhere definitely it's bound to happen it's get sipping in an our mind that now because i have been consistently getting it 8 plus cgpa so in just third and fourth semester also by default i will get the 8 cgpa right but all of sudden what happens that for any reason suppose in the next third semester you do not get the 8 cgpa you get it less than that so if we start coming with the excuses we do not practically we do not try to research that what went wrong because the fact is that we have not got the 8 cgpa we got it less than 8 right so instead we start that no 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 this uh, happened because of certain mistake and all like that right so the moment you start believing in your skill then the data believing in your ability then the data it's a classic exhibition of the overconfidence bias right so in in just in the world of trading and investment this overconfidence is called hope basically we call it as a hope right for example i am telling you just i i want to show you a chart look look this chart is it visible to all of you yes sir look so up to yesterday this adani was in a super just uh, it was in super momentum and whoever was buying this stock was make minting money like anything so the normal tendency of the people that every day come and buy the adani every day come and buy the adani right at whatever rate it opens they were just buying the adani and it was definitely giving money for many days all of sudden what happens today in the morning i'm look so this seven okay yeah 
So all of a sudden what happened in the morning, it opens at 23.96 and it made a high of 2403 and just it made a low of 23.75. So people who bought it at 24 or even 23.90, right, they were just started believing on the same story because the next moment, in the next 5 minutes, it's just a 5 minute data, right. So at 9.25 what happened, again it made a previous day, it just, it made a high of just 2.407 and th in the next moment just it made a high of 2.417. So again look, it starts, just the underlying start people made believe that the same story is continued today also. And Adani will Adani uh, enterprises in the same momentum, and the moment it made the high of two four one seven, thereafter immediate look in just five minutes what happened. It's it's a five minute chart, so it's in just next five minutes it made a low of two three six seven, right? So now those who bought it at two three nine zero two three eight zero two three seven zero, they are still waiting on the hope. Right, that the because this has been in a good momentum, and the price will again go up, and it will make a new high, new high, new high. Right, and the unfortunately, the data is that it made a low of by the three thirty. Right, and just it made and just got close at two three three seven. So look, there is a. Declination in the price from the high 2417 to 2337. So, those look. So, suppose I had just formulated a strategy and I discussed yesterday, right? As a part of the heuristic simplifications, I had suppose formulated a strategy that as long as the price will remain above this 8 or 20 day moving average, I will be in the buying side, right? Practically, people. The price has come and it's trading below the 20 day moving average now. People are not ready to get out of the Adani. Still, there are people now, they must be holding the position. In a hope that tomorrow, day after tomorrow, day after tomorrow, the price will go up. But who knows what is going to happen? Because it's a random data. And the random data is a... But the random is nothing rather it's a sequence of the future event and there is no guarantee that the future event is just correlated with the previous event right so then generally there is an assumption especially in the world of trading people assume that the previous trend will continue in the future also on this assumption people trade and people invest right so this, though we are not ready to look at the data, though the trend has changed, though the trend has reversed, but even then we are, because we have developed the system, so we come under perception that how my system can go wrong, right? Or how I can become wrong. So this, it is very difficult to accept that yes, my system has gone wrong, now my system has stopped working. So I should book the loss or I should get out, get out, right? So when you are overconfident in the world of investment and trading and along with your loss aversion biases, it is just enough to put you into a very different kind of situation, to put you into the mire of losses that keep compounding, keep compounding and keep compounding. And your capital gets eroded, right? So the same story had happened with the because look, if I have taken money on day at against every one rupees, I have taken a twenty rupees day. So there are just I am getting two sides. I have to fight on two front. 
so i am being just on one front my capital is getting depreciated by the market also the value of my capital on the second front i have i am under the burden to pay the debt and to repay the principal right so i am being beaten on two front right and return is not coming on two front so why does it happen if they would have just understood that my system because look i am a nobel laureate i have given a breakthrough formula into the finance i am a mathematician and also i cannot fail this is the overconfidence right but the black and skulls and that overconfidence put down the company and them and they became insolvent ultimately right so this problem of our confidence is not only into the world of investment and trading or in the world of finance everywhere this over confident problem is prevailing and we many times being over confident we promise so many things that we know that we are not we cannot deliver right have you ever experienced this situation or not so over confidence bias causes people to become too sure of themselves and their trading and investment skill especially in the world of trading and investment and just they start taking a kind of grandiose view of their abilities and this bias causes traders to take risky market positions and because of their belief they start losing the risk management tools that earlier they had decided to do it with a very tight rope and they believe that i cannot fa- i cannot fail in the market and that's why they just become the victim of over confidence and they fail right so there is a very famous saying in the world of finance and especially in the banking sector that it's too big to fail right look nobody could have um, imagined finance will fail nobody nobody could have imagined that the like this kind of fraud can take place they are like this nobody could have imagined that the king fisher will fail but all these thing, things fail right there x there are n number of example in front of us they are just they keep us warning that don't be over confident of your own ability or ability of your system if you here i am talking about the ability of the system not i am talking about the personal ability right so even because the system has also been created based on certain fixed facts and the facts also keep changing the data which might which was relevant yesterday it might not be relevant today i am telling you right sorry just a minute give me any question by anyone please okay. if you are saying rely on anything because if you are saying yesterday's data is not relevant today yes it's a very good question that started i am telling that started the data which you are getting on as a input it might not be relevant today right because you will have to look at the paradigm the paradigm has changed right so apart from facts and fee there are many other paradigm also so you should not 
take anything forever. Right? That because this, look, say suppose, even just I take this uh, Adani Enterprises as example. Right? Look, at one point of time, the same Adani Enterprises used to trade at uh, a study we had seen that the, at one point of time, look here, the same Adani enterprises traded at 68 rupees and from 68 rupees it just came to today to 2400 rupees. So, there is no guarantee that again it cannot go back. So, Right now, what is the data? That definitely it is just trading at 2400 rupees, right? But we should also be prepared that this data, on the basis of this data, if I am taking a decision, I may also be wrong. So, there should be a pre-provision and the pre-preparation that what will I do if I go wrong, right? Yes, sir. For example, suppose you are going you are, you are you are totally prepared to be uh, for interview and all right so you go and appear in the interview and you crack the interview when you enter into the company just two years three uh, two one three months down the line right the company thinks that the guy to whom i have hired perhaps he is not fitting to this job and you might be said that Sorry, now we do not require your service. So, if we are just, and just if we start looking at the data, you can sense so many things. But what happens that there is a tendency of overlooking of the things. He starts overlooking so many things, right? Look, nowadays what is happening? You can see there is an increasing trend of heart attack in many people. Right? People say that overnightly something is happening and people, right? It does not happen overnightly, I am telling you. There are many symptoms, there are, that is just, there are many signals that is given to us to our, by our body, right? But we ignore, we are in, there are people just who, ha, who are, who has fear to go to the doctors, right? So they ignore. But all of sudden, and when all of a sudden some disease erupts, they say that this happened all of a sudden. No, it has not happened all of a sudden. If they could have just done their, it is always suggested that after 20, 30 or 35, one should always go for the regular body checkup and all. But how, what is the percentage of the individual in India they go for the regular body checkup? In metro, even in metro also I am telling you, what is the percentage? There is no constant body checkup and all. So there is, we, because we are and about, we are overconfident about our health because I have been healthy, I have been, right, so what I think that tomorrow I cannot fall the ill. How can this happen to me? Why it cannot happen to me? So, we should just, we need to follow the narratives that has been said. And we need to keep tweaking our data also. Right? And no need to work on the hope. Right? But this is the problem that in our surroundings, either we just we believe on hope or just we are scared with the fear. We do not have tendency to look at the data. What is exact? What the exactly situation is? So you explain one thing now that eight days and twenty days something that you should watch market for eight days and that if it is uh, going up then it might more go up. This is a simple, it's, a, it's a general oversimplified technique that is used by the people moving average, right? This is what. So, yes, can you see this chart? Yes, sir. So, look, this is a simple moving average. This uh, 
the eight day simple moving average of the closing prices and this is just 20 day simple moving average of the closing prices and the 50 day simple moving average of the closing prices right so it's a normal uh, simple heuristic rule that if the price as long as the price is above 8 and 20 day moving average one should be in a buying side and the moment price goes below this uh, 20 day moving average should be in the selling side it's a normal heuristic simplified formula one of the formula this is not the only formula there are there is this is one formula that is produced by the people right so look if the, so here if i look at this this is the price and this is the moving average so my moving average is saying that there is a the moving average, the eight day simple moving average is coming at 2272 you can see here 2272 right so as long as the price does not go below 2272 i keep assuming that the, the there is a still the uptrend in the this adani enterprises so we can apply this formula to any other stocks also right or any other index also but this is it doesn't mean that if so look it ha and it has been working there is no guarantee that by now it has been working tomorrow it will also work right so the moment it stop working i should accept it gracefully and i should accept the loss and get out of the market this is simple but because mentally we are not ready to accept the loss and we just get stuck with our investment as one of your friend is studying he had come with an example that uh, there are many people in his family they are still the stuck into the cryptocurrencies investment right and many people i know they are stuck still stuck into the real estate investment they bought it at the high now they are planning to sell it out but they are not selling but even they are not daring that book the loss of five six lakh rupees and get out of the get out of that investment and put it into the some other investment of news right there are n number of investment avenues, right? Why yes, sir. Yes. Somebody was asking something. So, look. Can you tell me? Can I just just you do one thing today? Figure out the ten investment avenue as a as a MBA student. Right? Can you figure out the 10 or 15 investment avenues where one can just invest one surplus money? Because people come with this excuse that you are where to invest. There are four or five meaning. Well, either I should I can put my money into the real estate or I can put my money into the gold or I can put, put my money into the stocks or bank fixed deposit. There are many other options also, so many. But we need to reinvent, we need to research. So as an MBA student, as at least it should be on your tongue at least 15 to 20 investment avenues that you should be in a position to tell the people that, hey, get out of this one failure investment and just put your money onto others. I know many people who just bought DLF at 700 rupees and still they are just carrying this. I know many people who bought Sujlon just and still they are carrying it. What is the logic? Because they put their emotional attachment. So this is what the overconfidence bias. The next important theory that is the expected utility theory. Right. So this expected utility theory in the world of economics and finance, it estimates the 
what is the utility of actions which you are taking when the outcome is uncertain right utility you understand as a mba student yes yes or no do you people understand utility or not what is yes, utility sir, yes. what is this How utility is something which we uh, No, it is not like something that we use it. We use so many things, but that is of not utility. Uh, some, sir, no, something the, which is profitable to us. Yes, please go ahead. Sir, anything which is profitable to us, so we can define as utility. Okay, which is profitable to okay. So I am giving you a situation, right? You are too much hungry. so and you are given when you are too much hungry you are given four pizzas to eat so which pizza would be, will have the maximum utility of the maximum utility for you the first one the second one the third one or the fourth one first one the first one why Why the first one will have the maximum utility? Because we are we are more hungry at the first time, then we get, get satisfied little well, then exactly. more than more. Exactly. So utility is just a just the maximum satisfaction level that is given by the consumed goods or something, right? So the out what is the outcome of consuming that pizza? The first one, the moment you consume the first pizza, its outcome is that it satiates almost. 60 70% of your hunger hunger isn't it yes sir the second one pizza when you eat it will satiate rest of your hunger and the same pizza look the pizza is the same you have bought it from the same shop and all right the same sauce and everything same toppings and all but the you might that there might be now there is a change in your mood and you might be in a mood to reject the next two pizzas right and no 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 i don't want this these are just enough why you were not in a position to your your mood was not to reject the first and second pizza first you took it you welcome you gave very warm welcome and along with the cold drink and all and all right second just because the first pizza satiated 60 70% of your hunger so the utility of the first the consumption of the first pizza was at peak the second pizza it just satiated the rest of the utility and third and fourth pizza become became just a wonder a friend of your comes you just like to offer the next two pizza to him right but in case of the first and second pizza first pizza when anybody would have around you just you would have not care bothered about anyone and just you ate it have you just experienced this situation in your life any time any moment we everybody experience so it is the degree the sensitivity of your hunger right it is the degree of your hunger that is defining the utility so in the world of finance and investment also the expected utility is a theory that estimates the utility of an action when the outcome is uncertain so it serves as a reference guide for decision when the payoff is uncertain when the payoff is uncertain so in the world of finance utility theory looks that suppose we have four options to make an investment right suppose i am giving you four option to investment
of this white board is visible to all of you yes sir so suppose there are four option before us option 1 gold option 2 equity option 3 fixed deposit option 4 that is the public provident fund ppf option 5 some insurance and there are two condition there are two people look suppose one and two so one individual has just he has just to invest 2 lakhs individual has to invest say 10 lakhs so look at the outcome the probability of outcome so among all these product five product which product is having the most uncertain outcome what do you think gold equity fixed deposit ppf and insurance which is having the most uncertain outcome equity equity okay most uncertain and so and uh, which product is having the most certain outcome yes among all of five which is having the most certain art outcome fixed deposit fixed deposit okay okay so now suppose think that right and i have to make a decision between these two equity and fixed deposit which will give me the maximum expected utility of my investment equity or the fixed deposit equity sir equity okay why this is the most uncertain product and you are taking a decision that equity will give me the maximum utility right you are not i am not telling you are wrong right i just want to know your thought process why Sir, because because uh, equity can give me the higher return, and if all things went right, sir, uh, the earning that we earn from equity will be much higher than the uh, any other. Okay. 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 But there may be the possibilities of loss also in equity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the return is full of volatility. Yes, sir. right so look your answer is not absolute it's not a straight forward wrong or right right it's just it's a matter of setting a process and understanding look if i have just 2 lakh rupees it depends what is the importance of this 2 lakh rupees suppose just 6 months down the line i have to utilize this 6 2 lakh rupees in a marriage of my sister i would definitely not going i would not like to invest it into the equity i would like to invest it into the fixed deposit right that even if i do not get anything at least i will get 2 lakhs plus definitely something as a rate of interest whether it is just 5% or 2% right but say suppose i am i am a salaried guy and just every month i am having a salary of say 1 lakh rupees or 2 lakh rupees whatever it is so th this investment of 2 lakh rupees in i will not mind investing this 2 lakh into the equity itself 
right but even in ke- the moment it becomes 2 lakhs to 10 lakhs for the salaried guy who has very high income and all at the moment the money goes right he also start thinking to put his money in a product which outcome is more and more certain right so that's why it is said that as the fund keeps growing the rate of return starts flattening it is very easy to get 10% 15% 100% return on a 1 lakh rupees right but you cannot get the 100% you cannot on the 1 crore rupees how because look the mindset will be something different so suppose i buy look suppose i even i buy adani at the rate say 2400 how much maximum money i am going to lose i suppose i buy just one share how much money i am going to lose maximum 2400 rupees nothing else but suppose i have bought yes, the if i just suppose look you think it like this it's a very much important to understand let's suppose there are two guys so one's investment is one investment is just 1 lakh rupees and one investment is 10 lakh rupees and there is a depreciation in the price there is a fall in the value of the investment there is a fall in the value of investment by 10% fall by 10% so just here the fall is just 10000 rupees 10% of 1 lakh but here the fall is 1 lakh rupees right so the mindset of losing 10000 and the mindset of losing 1 lakh rupees is totally different in one go in percentage term the percentage of, of fall is just equal in both scenario but the mindset in absolute term the mindset of losing 10000 rupees and the mindset of uh, losing 1 lakh rupees will be totally different so i would definitely not like to put my money in any product which outcome is not that okay if you invest in my product i will just give a 20% return annually right keeping in view the risk of 10% fall and all i would say that okay even if it goes fall i will just i am ready to take the loss of 10000 but here the 10000 10% loss would be 1 lakh for me so i would like to have that instead of getting a return of 20% even somebody promised that me that i will give a return of 10% I, but it would be a certain return i would like to go with this because this 10% can just add 1 lakh rupees to my capital getting my point so this expected utility theory is all about making a decision when the outcome is uncertain right and look on all the insurance products that is being sold in the market that is totally based on this expected utility theory how are you sold the insurance product look how are you just have you ever bought uh, and in your family they uh, your parents or anyone they must have bought some medical insurance and all right so what was the reason to buy the medical insurance why do you not think why people not think that i will just go the day i will just fall ill i will go to the hospital and pay the bill what is the need 
I have my medical insurance and I have never claimed for last almost 12 years, not even a single time. May it happen? Bhagwan kare hum har saal kya premium hi the, right? I, I, but uh, why? In 10, 10, 12 years, almost I have paid uh, one lakh twenty thousand rupees as a premium, but I have not claimed even a single time. But even then, every year just there is a renewal of the medical insurance. Every year there is a renewal of the medical insurance. Why? What? What? What psychology is working behind this? The psychology is that expected utility theory, right? So this theory is estimating the utility of an action when the outcome is totally uncertain. I know that even if I fall one times, all the paid money that the that I'm paying as a premium, I will receive the the receiving outcome would be much more on higher side. So it just serves as a reference guide for decision when the payoff is uncertain. Right? So in case of all the insurance product, the payoff is totally uncertain. In case of all the investment which you make into the equity, the payoff is totally uncertain. Right? So nowadays, the banks and all the financial institutions, they are structured product and they are called they are calling it as a hybrid product right so it's a mix of fixed and it's a mix of variable income sort of product if you go into the banks they will just run after you to sell their these hybrid products like anything getting up any question we ask Yes, anybody? No question? Okay. No, sir. Okay, thank you. So, now the next, that is the gambler's fallacy. What is the gambler's fallacy? So gambler's fallacy is a mistaken belief about the random sequence of an event to occur in future. If I ask me a question, then what is price in the stock market? Look, it's a price is a series of data. If I just look, uh, it's uh, on one minute chart of this. Let me select some other, like, look, this is the chart of the reliance. So the graph is not showing. The graph is not visible. Not visible, okay. Is it visible now? I hope that. Yes, sir. Is it? Look. Look the randomness in the data of one minute. This is a reliance data, right? So look, just uh, um, for today, the action had begun from yeah, twenty-seven, twenty-seven, twenty-seven. Yeah, this yes. So today the action began from here in Reliance. You can look. So in one minute, this action, another minute, another action, another minute, another minute. Look the, how it has moved. You can see the randomness, right? So it just opened at 2765 and it made a high of so again it came back again it looked the kind of a spike it made again it came back it went up again it came back it went up like this right so you can see the kind of randomness that we have observed so why this so many ups and downs so many ups and downs 
Why? Because so this price prices are random. The previous price, this price, this next price does not does not have any relevance with the previous price. So the next sequence of the price is there is no guarantee that the next sequence of the price will come. In just in relation to the previous price. Okay. So actually, all the prices, they are just uh, the sequence of, they are the random sequence of an event to the, that is supposed to occur in the future. Right. So I cannot say with the guarantee that here, if this it made a high of 2781 in the next point of time it could have made a high of something else and but here it made a low of just uh, 2765 and in the next minute in 1 2 3 4 5 6 in the next 6 minute look from the low of high of 2821 so look the difference what has happened so, from it, look, those who bought at this level, that is uh, 2765, in just next 5 minutes, he made very handsome money. Almost uh, this uh, 60, 65 rupees, right? So suppose somebody would have bought just 1000 share of the Reliance, he would have made 1000 multiplied by the 60 rupees. But the next minute, suppose somebody, if but if somebody believed on this, that this uh, trend will continue, somebody would have must lost it. So how do the gamblers bet, actually, or the speculators bet? They bet, uh, they assume that the price that is prevailing in the previous time frame, the same price will continue in the next time frame. Right? Or it if some or it may not continue, so it may be something different. So, so for example, suppose there are you just flip a coins. So if you are flipping a coins five times you get head, 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 head. Would you like to assume that in the next six one time, if I ask to you that if you have been getting head, 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 in a sequence five times, what would be the next uh, next outcome, head or tail, in the sixth time? Can you tell? Head. Head. On what basis you said that it would be the head? Just be, because you looked at the previous pattern. Yes, sir. Right, and you assume that the in the next in the ne the next data that is coming that is also going to be the head because, right? So this is what exactly the gambler's policy is all about. So what happens that there is a belief in our mind that. Uh, a certain random event is less likely or more likely to happen based on the outcome of a previous event or a series of events. So five times just there is a head, 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 head. So there is five times there is a series of head event. So we assume that the next, we can assume two results. Either there might be another gambler who might be assuming because it has been coming head for last five times. So there might not be coming the tail. So it might not be coming the head, it might come to the tail. But one gambler may assume that because it has been time and again it is coming to head and head and head and head. So the trend might continue with the head. So this is how the waiting goes on. Right? But actual investors or the traders, professional traders, they do not wait on this. They do not bet on these kind of 
sequential relationship of the data. They bit, they look the data for many other, for many different time frames, right? They do some many other mathematical exercise also. And even then there is no guarantee. There is a risk management system put that what if I go wrong? What will I do? So when an individual erroneously believe that a certain random event is less likely or more likely to happen based on the outcome of a previous event or series of the events, right? This line of thinking is totally incorrect and it just it can put you into the trouble and you may lose a lot of money. Because the past events are not going to change or they, they are not going to maintain the probability of the event that is going to happen in the future. Look, what we start doing that we start attaching a probability with the event that is going to happen in the future by taking a cue from the past event. But there is no guarantee. Right? If I have been performing well in many, in all the months, January, February, March, all these months have been extraordinary for all the traders and all, right? There is no guarantee that April and May will, we will perform in the same way, right? But what happens that we start attaching probability based on our previous performance. Right. So, if you, so attaching the probability is not wrong in itself. Just to rely totally on this only on this attachment of the probability is a wrong thing. Right. And this may create a disastrous situation for you. Any doubt? Say, so for example, I am telling you. No. Just I discuss about the long term capital management failure. What happened? They also became the victim of this because for so many years they have been just doing so well, they have been doing so well, they, they were generating the alpha returns, right? So, what happened? Being overconfident, they increased the leverage, they took. all the money and the same bit, right? Because they were so confident on their strategies and they attached a very high probability of their past performance and this high probability, attachment of the high probability, expecting that in, in future also we will have the same performance and that's why that failure. And one mistake that created a totally chaos. So, what I want to tell you that in statistics, you must have studied a, con uh, a concept of a standard deviation, right? I hope that everybody have everybody is aware about this concept of a standard deviation. Look, you all are aware about this well safe well safe curve, right? In a statistics, I hope so. Yes or not? 
No, sir. No? It's a very basic level concept in statistics. I'm surprised to hear that in finance people, you people are not aware. This is the normal distribution curve. This is called if normal M distribution curve. Distribution curve. This is called normal distribution curve, C U R V E. Right? There is some problem with this whiteboard, right? And it gets turned into some other figure. So, actually, what does this normal distribution curve say? That, and look, this peak is considered as a mean. This peak is considered as your mean. Are you aware about the mean, median, mode? And all yes, a standard deviation. Yes, so this is the one SD. This is one SD minus, and this is one SD plus. So this is second SD plus, and this is second SD minus, and this is third SD minus, and that is this is third SD plus. So what does it indicate that? At the third here, the 68% 60, of the data gets covered in one SD minus and plus. In second SD, the 95% of the data gets covered. And in third standard deviation, 99.7% of the data gets covered. Percent. What does it mean that? How do you interpret this? It interpret this that the next data that the data which is going to come the random data that will fall it is a kind of range right that there is a 68 uh, out of the total observation 68 percent observation are supposed to fall into this range they can fall anywhere into this range but these are the boundaries 90 out of the total observation 95 percent data are supposed to fall into this range and in third standard deviation, 99.7% of the total observation, the data are going to fall into this range. So look, here almost out of the 100%, at third standard deviation, 99.7% of the data has been covered. It means that still the chance of falling the data beyond this range is 0.3%. Getting my point. It means what? The probability of falling the data beyond this range is very low. But if the data, but if it happens, look, if it happens, it an impact will be very high. It means, uh, look, the what I am trying to say, the probability of falling the rate data beyond three standard deviation is very low. But if it happens, in a stock market parlance, we use a term that for this kind of event, we call it a black swan event. We call it as a black swan event, B-L-S-C-K, black swan event. Swan event. Say, look, our all strategy or the, all the risk management system of exchanges and all that works on a concept in mathematics called VAD, VAD, value at risk. You must have studied in finance, right? Value at risk. Have you heard this term, VAD? PAR? Risk management paper, you must, have you just uh, read, uh, studied this risk management paper? Yes? Yes or no? Risk management, was it a part of your MBA program or not? Risk management? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So in the risk management, you must, it's a very common concept where VAR, value at risk. So actually all the value at risk concepts are based on this normal distribution curve. So they believe that the data will not go beyond three standard deviation. But if they go, its impact will be very high. 
So the low probability with the high impact. Understand? So suppose I am a look. Suppose one is a very very good swimmer, right? One is a very good swimmer, and he has been doing this swimming for so many years. So the chance of the swimmer to get thing in a normal river is very low. The probability is very low, isn't it? But if it happens, it's in yes. If it happens, its impact would be very high. Likewise, you can understand this with this chart. Now, is this chart visible? So look, suppose yes, the Reliance is trade. Now the Reliance is trading at twenty-seven hundred something, right? The chance of falling the Reliance up to this level, eighteen hundred level, the probability is very low. Because this is two hundred simple moving average, right? So the chart. If you just, I am. If I scroll down, you will find hardly one, one or two times this has happened. Look, it's very rare. It happened in the rarest of the rare case, right? The probability sir, of hello, yes. Sir, only the white board is showing. Only the white board is showing. Okay. I hope now it's visible. Yes, yes sir. Oh, if you just look from here, not even a single time. It's a weekly chart, and right? it means if from 2020 onward till 2002, 2022, in previous two years, not even a single time has happened that the Reliance has touched this 200-day simple moving average, right? Yes. So I can say with confidence that the probability of reliance touching this eighteen hundred level, the level is just eighteen hundred, right? So the the level of reliance, the the reliance coming down to eighteen hundred level is the probability is very low, right? So it might fall into ninety nine points into the third standard deviation at the two years data, but if it happens, its impact will be very. Every its impact will be very high. It means uh, many investors who have bought this Reliance at this level twenty eight hundred. Look, if, and if it comes to eighteen hundred, almost how many percent did they will lose? They will lose almost thirty forty percent, isn't it? Thirty percent. So. what i want to tell that we should always be ready for any unexpected its probability is very low but if it happens its impact will be very high right so for example no, none of us would have imagined that it, because it had never happened in the previous history of Almost hundred years that the train in India will get stopped. Had you ever experienced it? I don't think so. Anybody would have imagined. The train. The train, sir. Train, yes, train. But it got stopped for almost one month. The running of the train in India during the Corona period. Yes. Which had not happened in the previous. Hundred year history, right? One had never imagined that, despite having crores of rupees in the pocket, one will not be in a position to fly from from one country to the another country, right? I know people; they were crying to fly. They were just ready to give, you know, fifty, twenty lakhs crores of rupees, but there was no option before them to fly. the whole flight had been stopped at a time across the world had you ever imagined so these kind of incidents are 
black swan events and that happens beyond the three standard deviation so exactly what the gamblers policy is taken is that we try to create a kind of probability we try to attach the probability to the event that is supposed to happen into the future but we should not think that the probability that i am attaching it will work all the time so you should have a plan that what will i do if the same pro if the probability that i have attached to the future event what if it does not work because the past event is not going to change the probability or it is not going to attach add anything into the probability into the future event right but we do not have any option we we have to work on the historical data right that is also a bitter truth so we need to make a kind of trade off between these two so in a world of investment there is a very common philosophy all those successful investor or the trader they believe in a common philosophy and the philosophy is like this that uh, suppose you are given two option option number 1 low return with high probability high probability and option number 2 high return with low probability which suits to your mindset which would you like to go for tell me low return with high probability or high return with low probability sir low return with high probability sir low return with high probability high probability okay so any other answer by anyone sir high return with low probability high return with low probability okay good so look shu i think uh, shubham right who answered yes, that low return with high probability look the contradiction of your mind just few minutes before when i was discussing the just uh, this uh, expected utility theory i had given few options for investment so your preferred choice was investment into the equity right if you could remember so you given the choice you had just opted to invest into the equity than the fixed deposit so your mind was saying that i have to go with the high return with the low probability and when i gave you the another option you say that i would just like to have low return with the high probability so there is a contradiction isn't it so exactly yes, the same, exactly the same contradiction happen and it's very practical to happen right so otherwise all people would have minted money into the stock market and uh, and all right so that's why very few people could make success into the stock market i'm to it's a very bitter truth that it is one of the toughest battlefield to crack on but it's a very 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 it gives you a lot of freedom lot of money and lot of things to do right if you just 
crack the tricks of the trade. So now just majority of the people, they think something else and they act something else, right? So what is happening? I am just, I am looking for, I am just, I am thinking that I should invest into the equity. It means I am look, I am just thinking that high return with low probability. And just I am talking about low return with high probability. So exactly, this is how the emotions play when it comes to the actual action. But when you are just going by the data that no, I don't have to take any decision of my own with my own emotions or what my teacher is saying or what my brother or what my parents or whoever is telling, right? What the data is telling, I believe me, it will take so many rational decisions in your life, personal life also. So data crunching is the only solution of the rationality, nothing else. Right? However, there is a chance of error in that also if there is a problem with the input in the data. I cannot deny. So there lies your beyond the bondage experience, importance of your experience. Right? Because nowadays, look, we have been working on the mathematical model for so many years. So the moment somebody comes with the model and just if you look at the model, we come, oh, there is some problem with the data. Right? So, if mo if any particular model does not work, just looking at the data, I can figure out that why this is not working. Because I can sense. So, I say that take out this data, take out this data, this data, this data, it will just end the model will start working. It's the experience, right? But initially, we will have to create a framework for the rational making decision with the data not your emotions, right? So I hope that I have been successful in making the concept of this gambler fallacy and uh, expected utility theory to make it clear to your mind. This overconfidence bias, expected utility theory and this gambler's policy. Any yes. Just go to, into the depth of the behavioral finance and you will get the solution of so many problems. It is such a wonderful subject. I don't know how much you people have learned, but one thing I am definitely, I can tell you, during this process of teaching to you behavioral finance, I, I just, I have invented many new things and just, I am going to apply, right? So, it's my suggestion and this is such a beautiful topic. I don't consider it as a subject for your MBA. Consider it as a subject of your growth plan. Right? So, try to get some book, good books, read it. I have so many materials are available on the internet also now, right? So, try to read so many literature on the behavioral finance if you really want to take its test. And it's a very applied, just that it will keep you in moving into the theoretical world. Okay. Sir. Yes. Sir, could you quickly come, uh, summarize the theory of expected utility? Expected? Utility theory, right? So basically, expected utility theory tells us that that any outcome that is uncertain in nature. Suppose I have just I have to make five investment. An investment of all the five outcome is uncertain, right? Look, just I had given you the example that suppose there are five investment opportunities before me. One is the fixed deposit, one is the equity, one is the gold, one is the public provident fund, one is the insurance. So out of this five opportunity, there was only one 
investment of revenue that is the fixed deposit and and second one is the public provident fund so investment in these two were give the outcome was certain right in rest all the okay. revenues in equity and insurance are in gold the outcome was uncertain right so the expected utility theory helps me out uh, as a reference point to take a decision that which investment opportunity will give me the best payoff best payoff means what payoff the moment we use this word payoff payoff it's a risk reward profiling so on one hand so out of 3 4 5 whatever avenue in front of you and out of that all the avenue when we start dissecting the risk reward of all the avenues and that gives you the most favorable risk reward ratios right because the uh, the result the outcome is uncertain so in uncertain environment i have to work with that all the possible risk reward ratio and that gives me the most favorable risk reward ratio we should go with that outcome right so expected utility theory is all about it tells that which outcome which is full of uncertainty i should pick one am i right yes sir got it okay okay thank you very much so i think it's here yes. so anyone from yeah sure. anyone from grab guidance yes. or uh, yes ma'am sh should i leave yes sir yes sir thank but you so much students, yeah but the uh, students i am still waiting for your uh, that assignment that had been given day before yesterday to come with this answer of these questions all this none of you have come so i expect that next day few of you would come with the answer of these questions yes sir <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.